everyone. Welcome back. My name is Amanda. Thank you so much for watching today. I am currently reading my dating advice blog series, Understanding How You Date. I am in the middle of the second quarter, making the decision to date. I just did April, so today I will be reading the blog post for the month of May on the topic, The Pros and Cons of Dating. I really like this month. Let us begin. You ready? Let's go. Pros and cons of dating. Week one. Intimacy without drama. That's the goal. So we create tons of avenues in pursuit of that goal. We come up with terms like friends with benefits or makeout partners, trying to escape the drama that comes with being in a relationship. Trying to have the best of both worlds, love and sex with no fighting, no arguing, and always getting along. Right. Dream world much? I am currently single, so sometimes I miss having a boyfriend or miss one of my ex-boyfriends. But if I was really honest, I would have to admit, I just miss the making out part. Or the staying up late and having sexy conversations part. Or having someone to talk to or curl up next to. Ah, those were the days. Those are all great and what we all aspire to have in a relationship. Correction. That is what we aspire to get out of a relationship. However, we rarely look at or talk about what we bring into a relationship. And for most of us, we bring baggage. Baggage is where all that drama we avoid like the plague comes from. Even someone who's never dated before has baggage they still have been affected and shaped by observing the relationships they see around them. They still have experiences, both good and bad, that they will take with them. And no matter what you do to avoid or deny said baggage, until it is dealt with properly, it won't go away. Evidence of baggage comes in the form of anger, jealousy, fits of rage, easily offended or extreme defensiveness, abusive behavior, and the like. These are all negative behaviors acquired over the years and are kept in a person's life or bag that can be pulled out and used whenever the certain situations or stimuli presented themselves. Read more about negative behavior in Galatians 5 verse 19 through 21. However, the solution is not to avoid the problem by coming up with alternatives for relationships, but to instead learn the tools necessary for building good relationships and implementing them. That is the first pro on my list. Number one, practice good relationship skills. No matter what you've heard, relationships are work. And maintaining good relationships takes hard work. Both parties must make the effort to spend time together and get to know one another and learn to expre express love to each other. It's simple but hard. Like with anything, if you want to be any good at it, you got to do the work. And I'm not advocating promiscuity, people. So that would be my first con. One, maintaining good and healthy relationships require hard work. 
it's not always easy. And we often, we, and often we do give up. That's why there are breakup songs and breakup movies. But notice, it's easy to give up. It's easier to throw up your hands and swear you're never gonna do go through that again. It's harder to stick it out, identify a problem, and find a solution. We are always on the lookout for a quick fix or a perfect mate. And the truth is, there is no quick fix or perfect mate. That's my con number two. Number two, there is no quick fix or perfect mate. News flash. No one is perfect. Ironically, the only one who is perfect is Jesus. And the only real true fix is also Jesus. So, those if those are the things you are seeking, go to Jesus. He is and has everything you need. Recap. Pro number one, practice good relationship skills. Cons, one, maintaining good and healthy relationships require hard work. And two, there is no quick fix or perfect mate. This pro con list may end up a little lopsided when we're done, but I'm just writing them as they come to me. I will explore more as the weeks of May roll on. Pros and cons of dating week two. Last week I wrote about one pro of dating and two cons. I just read them so I won't tell you again. I'm nah, just kidding. Okay, so pro number one, practice good relationship skills, meaning that you can learn techniques to solve the problems that arise in relationships instead of running from them and, or avoiding them. And two cons go hand in hand. There's one is maintaining good and healthy relationships requires hard work. And the reason why they require hard work is because of con number two, there is no quick fix or perfect mate. Now, those two cons seem rather depressing. So today, I want to focus on a couple of pros. Pro number two, gain experience. And pro number three, sometimes if you take a risk, you can gain the reward of finding the one you want to marry a positive result of dating is gaining experience, both positive and negative. You may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, what good could there possibly be in a negative experience? Actually, a lot. Negative experiences cause you to learn and grow. For example, if you find out your boyfriend is cheating on you, you learn right away that that is not the kind of guy you need to be dating. Learning what character and personality qualities you like and want in a guy slash girl is definitely a good thing that is gained through experience. Conversely, you can gain positive experiences like fun trips, dates, and first kisses that you will remember for a lifetime. Dating is not all bad. Sometimes it's all good. Full of romantic gestures, presents, and cool pictures. And who doesn't want that? Along those same lines is pro number three. Sometimes if you take a risk, you can gain the reward of finding the one you want to marry. This one hasn't happened to me but I know it happens to other people. While there is always a risk of getting hurt when you open yourself up emotionally to another person, 
there is also a reward that comes with it. There's, uh, yeah. Perhaps when you share your life goals, morals, ethics, and standards, you find common ground. And as you continue to establish and build on a good foundation in Christ, you may then decide this is the person God wants you to be with. And like I said previously, dating is a balance of prayer, discernment, and relying on God to provide acceptable guys slash girls. Perhaps God has provided you with an acceptable guy and now you're dating him. Yay! That's great! Congratulations! So, recap. Pros. One, practice good relationship skills. Two, gain experience. Three, sometimes if you take a risk, you gain the reward of finding the one you want to marry. I have another con, but I'm saving it for next week. Pros and cons of dating week three. Last week, I wrote about a couple of pros of dating. My current list is as follows. One, practice good relationship skills. Two, gain experience. And three, sometimes if you take the risk, you can gain the reward of finding the one you want to marry. I want to open this week with a flashback to what I w had written, what I've written about many times since I started this blog, the 22 things. In our American society, we have certain milestones we need to hit in order to be considered a successful human being and not a failure. I compiled a list of them and I believe it sums up exactly what every person is trying to achieve in this lifetime. They are the 22 things. I'm not going to read them. Go back to my other videos if you want to watch those. <laughs> uh, so five out of the 22 things involve another person. Number six, uh, have sex slash lose virginity. Thirteen, get a steady boyfriend or girlfriend. Number fifteen, get engaged. And number sixteen, get married. And number eighteen, have babies. It is assumed since five out of the 22 things involve another person, it is assumed that for the most part, everyone is looking for or waiting for someone to date, marry, etc. in order to fit in and not be weird. Only very rarely do you find someone who is actually okay with being single. And because of that fierce desire to be with someone else, many times people get themselves into relationships and situations they are not, that are not always best or for the right reasons. Often girls want to be rescued from their current circumstances by a guy when they marry and they think, once they are married, all their problems will go away. Similarly, guys tend to think that if they can just find a girl who will have sex with them whenever they want, then their problems will be solved. Neither of those things happen. Because the truth is, my con number three, a relationship won't solve your problems. A relationship will provide you with new problems. What new problems? Well, now you've added a new person with a whole personality, with different experiences, thoughts, and feelings. You're bound to have some problems. Use your imagination. That may sound awful, but it is true. And I don't want to give anyone false hope. That's why I'm addressing these three cons. One, maintaining good and healthy relationships require hard work. Two, there is no quick fix or perfect mate. And three, a relationship won't solve your problems. A relationship will provide you with new problems. As well as the pros, practice good relationship skills, gain experience. Sometimes if you take the risk, you gain the reward of finding the one you want to marry. 
I believe it's important to think about what you're getting into before you make the decision to date. It says in Proverbs, it is a trap for a man or woman to de dedicate something rashly and only later con to consider his vows. Proverbs 20 verse 25. In other words, it's better to think it through before you get mi yourself mixed up with someone forever. A simple man believes anything, but a prudent man gives thought to his steps. Proverbs 14 verse 15. If you are thinking about starting a dating relationship with someone, be smart enough to think it through before you get too involved. That's good advice. Take it. Pros and cons of dating week four. Last time I wrote about my third con, number three, a relationship won't solve your problems. A relationship will provide you with new problems. And I stress the importance of thinking things through before you make the decision to date. This time, I will be concluding the month with my final pro-con. God will always allow you to make your own decisions, but God will also, I'm sorry, always bring you back if you stray too far. It's a con because it can be scary when you think about how God will allow you to mess up and make mistakes. It's a pro because it is a comforting and reassuring promise that we can trust. While we can trust God not to take away free will, we can also trust he will not allow us to stray too far from what he wants for us. He is the good shepherd. And when one of his sheep go astray, he always goes after it. What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away? Will he not leave the 99 on the hill and go to look for the one that wandered off and if he finds it I tell you the truth he is happier about that one sheep than the 99 that did not wander off in the same way your father in heaven will not willingly is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost Matthew 18 verse 12 through 14 we are lucky to be born after the Holy Spirit has come because with his help we can follow his leadership and not have to suffer through the consequences of our mistakes because he will guide us away from temptation. Jesus taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I translate that into as you guide us today and we follow your lead, do not allow us to go near anything that will distract us from or cause us to think differently from your perfect way of doing things, but instead take us far away from and pull us in the opposite direction from the one who rejects you and all you stand for. So what, is, what does this mean for us? Well, it means that even if you choose to date a guy God would not approve of or something, God will allow you to make that choice and allow you to experience the consequences up to a point. He will pull you back when you, you have gone astray if you let him. He did that too slash for me. And if you listen to him, he will keep you from going astray in the future. Tune in next time for June's look at your decision to date and its effect on other people. The end. I have no notes.
notes for this one. So thank you so much for watching today and remember to listen to God and do what he says. I will see you in my next video.